SEGA Just like in a top tier race series, your car is in a constant state of evolution. You can't coast through a series with the same car that you had at the beginning of the season, nor can you push for a championship and ignore moving resources into the development of next year's car. It's down to you to master the technology to put your team in the best possible position to win. In our first video, we looked at building your team. Now we're going to move on to mastering the technology. I'm here with Rob Pearson, who is the lead designer on Motorsport Manager. Rob, can you just, before we start, can you just tell us a little bit about what you do on the game? Uh, so as the lead designer, I'm kind of responsible for all of the gameplay, um, all of the choices that the player has to make, and kind of tuning things and tweaking things so that all of the races are fun and exciting and they go down to the last lap. <laughs> Great. So in the first video, we talked a little bit about the drivers, the staff, and we finished on the headquarters. And we'll, we'll go back to that in a sec. But um, firstly, this is all about mastering the technology. So why don't we talk a little bit about the cars in the championship? Mm -hmm. um, so this is the World Motorsport Championship car. Um, as you can see, it's like our top tier. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of glossy, most exciting version of the car. And um, compared to some of the other tiers, like you've got more details going on here in terms of the little bits of aero. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can go deeper into the development of the aerodynamics on it. So see at the moment on there, there's quite a large um, diameter rim on there. That, is that something that changes throughout the development of the game, not just the car? Yeah, so that's actually tied to our politics system. Okay. And uh, the rules of the championship you're in will change from year to year. Um, in this case, uh, because of the rule set we have set up on the World Motorsport Championship, uh, you've got these nice big rims on this car. Um, there can be lots of other different tires, kind of grooved, mm -hmm. um, sort of Formula E style road tires. Is this something that you're able to, to vote on? Like as a, as, as, a, as a manager of one of the teams, you will have a say in whether you move to larger diameter rims, whether you move to slicks or grooved tires, mm -hmm. or basically how not just the cars progress, but how the series progresses as well. Yeah, so as a, as a manager, you're kind of member of the um, Global Motorsport Association. Mm. And and yeah, you get to vote on all of this stuff. But is that is that just limited to the car, or does that also mean, say, for example, certain rule changes like tracks as well? Can you, mm -hmm. is it, does anything change on tracks, or does it change in how the series is Yeah, run? so it's not just to do with the cars. I mean, we're looking at the car now, but mm -hmm. you can change track layouts in some championships. You can even vote in totally new tracks. You could remove tracks. So let's say your team's struggles, particularly around Cape Town, because it's quite a tight sort of circuit. Right. Um, maybe you want to get rid of it. And you can vote on that, just the same way the rest of the team principals or the managers do. And um, whichever, <laughs> whoever wins the vote, that's going to change the way the championship plays out next season. So that comes down to mastering the technology as well, because you're not just making sure that you get the best car possible, but you're trying to make sure that the tracks that you run are, are not yeah. just the best tracks, but the best orientations of tracks as well to suit your car. Yeah, and you know that can come down to um, changing the layout of certain tracks. So if you want to make sure there's an extra chicane in a certain track that's going to benefit you, then yeah, you can really push for that. So each track in the game will have multiple layouts. And as you progress through the game, you can vote on which layout that they're going to race on. Yeah, so some, some tracks are specific to one layout just because they're kind of more traditional old school tracks. Right. Um, but some have lots of different configurations. I think okay. we have um, Dubai has five different layouts. Right. And we're not limited to like street circuits. There's, there's, there's more traditional old circuits and there's also ovals as well, isn't there? Yeah, there's an oval. You can, uh, <laughs> if you if you manage it, you can vote that in, um, and it's really interesting to see the cars going around an oval. I mean, <laughs> the lap times are insanely tiny. <laughs> you know, you're doing a hell of a lot more laps, and it's like it's a totally different challenge for the cars. Sure, um, throws up some slightly different results. Sure. So, going back to where we left off with the audience, shall we just skip through to um, the headquarters? Okay. So we were talking a little bit um, with Sam about the drivers and the staff, but the headquarters probably is more linked to the technology of it because that will affect what you can uh, what you can develop and how how the process of development takes place, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly right. So how far you can drive the development of your car mm. is linked intrinsically to the quality of your headquarters. 
So we can see that the ride handling development uh, design center is only at level one of three. So that affects one certain part of the car then. Yeah, that's right. So the ride handling development affects the suspension. Right. Okay. And um, if you want to put more money into that, you feel like it's going to benefit you. Maybe you can see there's some tracks coming up that are really going to benefit from stronger suspension. Um, then you can push for that. And it's kind of a long-term decision mm. uh, that's really going to impact the way your car behaves around the track. All of this links back to how you design your parts. So right. we'll just jump into that there. OK, so if, if we're looking at the, the, the overall screen at the moment and sort of developing parts, um, where we can see at the moment for our next race, which is in Belgium, mm -hmm. we can see the rear wing and the engine are the most crucial things mm -hmm. to develop on there. So is, is, are those the areas that a player would focus on before the next race, or are we, are we looking two or three races ahead? Well, that really depends on the player's strategy. I mean, they can, up here, they can have a look ahead to okay. the next few tracks. Looks like top speed's looking pretty good. That's marked as crucial and useful for the next two tracks. So, um, you know, looking ahead like that and making that longer term decision, like if maybe a clever player is going to be able to analyze the calendar and pick uh, their best development plan, essentially. Because it takes time to develop these parts. It's not just like yeah, they're available and that comes down to the headquarters as well. It's how, how quickly you can get them developed and to what level you can get them developed. Yeah, so all of the, all of the different parts have different build times and they have different costs. So, um, you know, depending on what you've got in your bank balance, <laughs> you might not be able to afford that new engine. <laughs> so you can see here that the engine is actually not going to make it. In time right, okay, so race. even though that's technically crucial for the next race, mm -hmm. it's not going to be built in time. So our focus should be on something that can be built in time. So before each race, you will need to look at this screen and make sure that all, your, all the parts on the car are in the best shape they can be and make sure that if you've developed new parts or whether you've just developed replacement parts, they're on the car at the same, at the same time. Shall we, sh shall we go through the process of sort of changing some of the parts over or upgrading parts? Yeah, so um, as, as you were saying, you know, your parts have different ratings, so mm -hmm. they have their own personal stat, whether it's low speed corners or top speed or acceleration and they have reliability, so let's say you're going to the race, you might want to weed out any parts with super low reliability. Right. Um, and here we can see uh, we've just made a couple of uh, much better parts here. So these are parts that have just been developed within our HQ? Yep, yeah. yeah. So uh, we've just created a new rear wing and a new gearbox, and you can see they've got much better performance rating than uh, those ones you start the season sure. on. However, they've got some dodgy, reliabil <laughs> dodgy reliability. Because um, they are technically yeah. prototype parts, so if you push the boundaries, you're not necessarily going to yeah, get the reliability so, um, straight away. Yeah, so they're brand new. If you're going pure performance, then you're going to expect to have to do some work in the factory. Because uh, they're not tried and tested yet. Yeah. Back up. Right. Yeah. Um, but let's put them on anyway, because they're so much better. I mean. <laughs> Okay. So, in, so on the right-hand side, you can choose whether that goes on Harry's car or Nina's car. Yeah, so uh, the left-hand button puts it on driver one's car, and the right-hand button puts it on driver two cars. And if you have multiple of those parts developed, presumably you can put them on both, can you? Uh, so, no, they all appear as like a one individual entry. So right, okay. Yeah, so you like it's one of the really interesting things about the system. You only create one part at a time. Okay, so sometimes you have to prioritize one yeah. driver over the other. Yeah, so you're, you're often forced into a corner. <laughs> um, and yeah, your drivers, like I say, they're, they're going to notice this stuff. So um, <laughs> um, you can see as well, like this, this graph over here is giving you a good indication of whose car is better. And we can see that Chapman's car right, okay. way better in the high speed corners because we've just given him this nice new rear wing. We also have a feature within the game, which is part improvement. Mm -hmm. And you can improve every part in one of two ways. So each part has a little bit of potential to be improved. Right. And that's defined kind of by your lead designer. Um, he, depending on his skills, his stats, like let's say he's a particular engine expert, mm -hmm. then you know he gives you a little bit more room to uh, get that engine up to um, up to the place where it's better than everyone else on the grid. Right. Um, you can also improve the reliability. So, 
like you were saying, often when you make a new part, mm -hmm. uh, the reliability is not going to be that great. Um, so it's a really good idea to uh, get the reliability team to have a look at it, mm -hmm. and you know, over the course of a few days or maybe a week, then they can get that race ready. Right, um, okay. You know, which gives you, you know, definitely gives you a few less headaches in the race. <laughs> So obviously we're looking at this in the top tier of, uh, in the game at the moment, so there's a lot of options available to us, but there are more than one tier, aren't there? There's, I think there's, there's three, isn't there? Yeah, that's right, and uh, there's a big difference between the different tiers, so as we were talking earlier about the uh, different rule sets, mm -hmm. like, you know, some of them have really different rules, like the amount of points that are dished out, right, um, okay. and even the parts you can develop for each of yeah. the parts. And in this uh, championship that we're looking at here, the engines are spec, so you won't be able to develop them. Um, right, okay. So straight away, you, I mean, we can see that it's, sort of, it's, a, it's a lower spec car than in the top tier. Yeah, all, all of these championships are going to play out slightly differently. The, the bottom tier, you're not developing any of the aero, because mm -hmm. uh, that's probably a little bit beyond like the quite limited budgets. So that'll be that pretty much a spec series. Yeah, that'll be a lot closer to a spec series. Right. I mean, we still allow some development because you know it's a, it's a fun part of the game, mm -hmm. and um, you know it really allows you as the player to uh, improve your car and make a lot of strides mm. away from the track as well as on it. But these lower series are important because they're sort of the proving grounds, aren't they? And that's the same for drivers as well. So if you're looking for new drivers or mechanics or designers, mm -hmm. some of them are coming from the lower spec teams and they're looking to get into the top tier as well. Now. There's only so much you can do. You can uh, make sure you've got the right team in place, the right drivers, the right designers, the right mechanics. You've developed your car as much as you can. You've fitted all the right parts. You've set it up as much as you can. But when it comes down to it, when it actually comes to the race, there's the split second decisions that will decide whether you win or lose. And that'll be the focus of our next video, where we'll be joined by Chief Technical Officer Christian West, where we'll be talking through the dilemmas that you'll face on the pit wall that decide whether you win or lose the race. Make sure you like and subscribe below, and we'll see you next time.